Today on The Hookup, I was going to teach you how to combine Amazon Echo emulation with the Echo's built-in routines functionality to allow for advanced control of your projects without the need for a hub. But I accidentally built a pretty cool Amazon Echo controlled LED clock while explaining it. So stick around if you're interested in either of those things. A few weeks ago, my elementary aged nephew came to visit all the way from Chicago, and he's definitely got the tinkerer gene. In his carry-on bag, he packed his Nintendo Switch, a Raspberry Pi, an Arduino Uno, and a few LED strips. As you can imagine, this was my time to shine as the cool uncle. So we set out to do a fun project together. He showed me how he uses Tinkercad to create 3D models, and together we designed a personalized LED nightlight for his room using an ESP8266 Node MCU. There was just one small problem. He doesn't have a SmartThings hub, or Home Assistant, or a computer, or even a cell phone. And so the only way that he can control his project wirelessly is with his Amazon Echo Dot. Over the last few years, there have been a bunch of different libraries developed for Arduino to emulate local devices to use with the Amazon Echo. The first devices emulated the Belkin Wemo protocol, but they only offered a binary on-off state. More recently, the emulation has switched to the much more powerful Philips Hue protocol, and a library called ESP Alexa, developed by AirCookie, supports brightness, color, and on newer devices, it even supports color temperature. Since each ESP8266 device can emulate up to 10 different Hue devices, you can cram a lot of different control into one project. Today we're going to look at a pretty simple LED project that I downloaded and printed off of Thingiverse called Lazy Grid Clock. The LEDs that I'm using are WS2812B, but they're the slightly denser 300 LEDs per 5 meter version. This creates a 7x11 grid of LEDs for us to play with. I'm using this project for the purpose of this video, but you can apply the same concepts to any echo controlled project. In today's sketch, we're going to build in some effect using the Fast LED library. I'm not writing these from scratch, they're actually just taken directly from my Holiday LED 2.0 sketch that I use for the LEDs that are mounted to the roof of my house. The difference is, instead of using MQTT to control the colors and effects, we're going to use the ESP Alexa library and a little bit of out of the box thinking. My sketch requires three different things. There's an overall brightness control, color control for three individual colors, and then the effect control. This means that I'm going to have to emulate at least three devices to be able to control my three different colors, and then I need to determine how to deal with the other controls. The first device I'm going to call Smart Clock. The second device is going to be called Clock Color 2, and my third device is going to be called Clock Color 3. Each of these devices can have their brightness and color set individually via the Amazon Echo. That means that I'll have six distinct command channels for my project. I'll be using the RGB color controls for each device to set the three different colors for my animations. And then I'm going to use the brightness of the smart clock device for the main brightness of the grid. I'll use the brightness of the clock color 2 device to set the effect of my project. And I'll use the brightness of clock color 3 to modify the different properties for each effect. And if you're thinking that using the brightness values of a device seems like a stupid and clunky way to control effects, stick with me. I promise it'll all make sense later. In my code, I'll modify the different callbacks for each Amazon Echo command to change the property that I want. That means, for Smart Clock, the brightness will be assigned to the global brightness variable, and the RGB color information will be saved to red 1, green 1, and blue 1. For clock color 2, I'll use the RGB color information for red 2, green 2, and blue 2, and then I'll use the brightness information to assign different values to my effect variable. In my example sketch here, I just took 100% of brightness, and then I divided that by the number of effects that I wanted to be able to select from. And then I used if statements to figure out which effect that would be selecting. A switch case probably would have been a better way to program this, but I decided to use if statements because I think they're easier for learning programmers to understand, and I want you to be able to read my code. For clock color 3, the RGB color information is going to become red 3, green 3, and blue 3. And my brightness information is going to become the effect modifier. This is the only echo command that will be a little bit clunky, since you'll have to say things like turn clock color 3 to 80 in order to modify whatever you want in the current pattern. If you wanted to avoid this odd speech, you could just add a fourth device called clock effect or something like that to solve the issue. 
Now that we've gone over the code, we can upload it to our Node MCU and get our LEDs hooked up. This sketch uses the D2 pin for the LED data pin, and I'm gonna power the Node MCU with five volts connected to the VIN pin and ground connected to the ground pin. I wouldn't recommend trying to power all 83 LEDs using the USB input of the Node MCU, because that will put a lot of strain on the voltage regulator and will likely cause it to fail. Instead, you should split your five volt source and attach one side of the split to your Node MCU and the other to the LED strip. One trick that I like to use is that I connect the power injection wires of the LED strip directly to the 5 volt AC adapter, and then I use the connector that comes with the LEDs to provide 5 volts and ground for the Node MCU. Once you've got all your connections made, you can power up your projects, start up your Echo app, and then hit search for new devices. Next you'll see your three devices pop up as discovered, and then you can set them up. You can click on each of them to test out your project. Smart Clock should turn the device on and off, adjust the brightness, and set color 1. Clock color 2 should change color 2, and the brightness slider should change the effect when changed in increments of 10. You can see the different effects here and how they change with the brightness slider. Finally, clock color 3 should set color 3, and the brightness slider should modify the properties of each effect. These properties are things like the speed of the animation and the frequency of the random glitter effects. But again, these controls are far from user friendly, so it's time to set up some routines. We don't want to have to remember to say things like set grid color 2 to 30 in order to turn on the rainbow effect. We want to be able to say things like set the clock to rainbow. To do this, click on routines and hit new routine. You'll want to choose voice event for the trigger. I'm going to use the phrase change the effect to rainbow, but you can choose almost any phrase that you want. Under action, we'll go to smart home and then clock color 2 and set the brightness to 30. Now whenever we say change the effect to rainbow, it will automatically set clock color 2 to 30% brightness, which is interpreted by the Node MCU as changing the effect to rainbow. This is a fun and useful hack because it allows makers like us to produce projects that can end up in people's homes without having to support any cloud API or service. And the Echo local integration is actually really stable and responsive, so tech support issues should be kept to a minimum. As I said, this concept doesn't just apply to LED projects. It can be used to give powerful control to any DIY project without needing to have a hub or a bridge device in the end user's home. If you're interested in building this exact project, I've left the links to the excellent Thingiverse project made by the user Paralyze, and I've put Amazon links for all the products I've used. The code I made is also down in the description if you want to modify it for your own project. Some interesting applications I thought of for this clock could be things like changing the colors for your kid to signify playtime, cleanup time, bedtime, screen time, homework time, or any other specific time that you regulate for your kid. And basically all of that can just be done with routines in the Echo app without adding additional code. I've got a bunch of other ideas that I'm gonna implement, like a timer and a stopwatch functionality, but seeing as I kinda just made this project by accident, I haven't fully implemented them in my code. You can check my GitHub page for updates, which should happen in the next week or so. Speaking of modifying code, I am currently in the process of updating most of my projects to include Echo, SmartThings, Hubitat, and OpenHab support, in addition to the standard MQTT-based support that I use for Home Assistant. If you're an OpenHab user and you'd be willing to write the things, items, sitemap, and rules files for my projects, please leave a comment down below or send me an email. If you're a SmartThings or Hubitat user, please let me know if you'd be willing to beta test my integrations and give me feedback on them. If you're interested in supporting my channel, you can use the affiliate links down in the description, or you can support my channel directly through Patreon like these awesome people do. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup. Mm -hmm.